What's up, Jeremiah? A few hours ago, Roland announced their EX30 Arranger keyboard. This EX30 is most likely a replacement for the Roland EX20, which I didn't give a very favorable review in one of my past videos. And I am excited when I looked at what this entry-level keyboard from Roland is capable of. It is no secret that the EX series of keyboards from Roland is targeted towards beginners and is an entry-level keyboard which is also priced attractively. However, Roland has packed in a whole load of features inside this keyboard that I am extremely excited. This keyboard will not be available in all markets and is predominantly targeted towards the Indian market, the Oriental market, which basically means Middle East, as well as the Vietnam, Southeast Asia, and the Indonesian market, as evidenced by the way the voices are grouped and the way the styles are grouped. So in this video, I will be discussing about what I am really looking forward to in this keyboard and what are a couple of the misses that I feel Roland could have just packed it in to complete the package. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy C and in my channel, I make reviews, tips and tutorials about Arranger keyboards as well as portable digital pianos. If you like content like this, make sure you subscribe and smash that notification bell icon. So the Roland EX30 keyboard is a 61 keys fully touch sensitive keyboard. And the first thing that impresses me with this keyboard is it has a whopping 256 notes of polyphony. This is pretty much unheard of in the entry level keyboard world. Let's put things into perspective. The Casio CTX5000, which is Casio's flagship 61 keys keyboard has only 64 notes of polyphony. And if we look at Yamaha's flagship PSR S series, the S975, even that keyboard has only 128 notes of polyphony. And this entry level keyboard has a whopping massive 256 notes of polyphony. There is absolutely no way one will ever run out of notes if this specification is really true. In fact, with these 256 notes of polyphony, brands like Yamaha and Casio, with the entry-level keyboards offering just a measly 32 notes of polyphony, really should be quite a shame of themselves that Roland can provide so much at this price point and yet Casio and Yamaha just are not able to do so for their entry-level keyboards. And Roland managed to pack a lot of features into a very compact and light package. This keyboard weighs in at only 6.2 kilos, which is a surprising thing because it has a reasonably sized LCD screen. It also has a pair of 10 watt speakers, although not the most powerful as compared to Casio's CTX5000 that has 12 watts on each side. You have to understand that this is most likely going to be an entry level keyboard and that is impressive on its own. In addition, it is able to run on six AA batteries, which is crucial as this is marketed for the developing countries and in places like Middle East, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, the keyboard is really the center of attraction, the center of entertainment during family gatherings and during festivities and having a portable device that can run on batteries is really crucial. What is a keyboard if we don't talk about voices? So this keyboard is packed with a massive 706 voices. I think Roland has really gone all out to make sure that there is loads and loads of voices and it is really gonna be an absolute value for money keyboard with the number of voices that they have provided. And these voices coupled with the 256 notes of polyphony is just going to make this a very appealing package. There is no secret that Roland has an extensive library of really good sounding samples. Roland has been in this business for a long time and they have a legacy of really, really good sounds. You can hear these good sounds in their EX20 even. There is no discounting of the sounds even in their entry-level keyboards and their Roland Go Keys keyboard also has a very impressive set of sounds. As usual, these voices can be played in dual mode with two layers of voices together or it can be split across the keyboards with different sounds on each side of the keyboard. You can also further personalize and thicken up the sounds with 11 reverb effects as well as 12 choruses. 
and if you're playing with the auto accompaniment mode the arranger functions as well as the styles you can use the auto harmony feature on this keyboard to have more than a couple of notes on your right hand even though you're just pressing a single melody note one feature that i really really like on the roland ex30 and i feel that all keyboards should technically have this button is the piano button when you press this button it immediately defaults to a piano and you can just play it like a regular piano next let's talk about styles again roland has done it once more roland has packed in a massive number 347 styles and it has been categorized into the music of different countries as well we have a specific group of styles for brazil for indonesia for vietnam for india as well as for the oriental and you can tell this is the markets that roland will be targeting this keyboard for as per usual with the other brands of keyboard at this price level all the styles would have one intro one ending you get two variations with it but what i really like is that auto fill is built into the button itself so if you press the variation of the style it would automatically do a fill in before proceeding with the styles that is something that is not found in all brands of keyboards casio for example hasn't got around to putting an auto fill feature into their style variation button yet the other thing that literally just wipes out the yamaha psr e series is the massive number of chord detection modes on the roland ex30 so not only does it have the usual single fingered and multi-fingered mode it is surprising that at this price level it has a chord on bass chord detection mode which is really useful for anyone who's going to take the trinity college of music keyboard exams and a lot of my students have found the yamaha not suitable for the trinity college of music exams because we are required to play chord on bass different inversions of the chords for the exam pieces and that is simply not found on the psr e series it is really surprising that we have a full keyboard detection mode in this price range this takes up quite a bit of computing power and is usually reserved for the higher end keyboards and i'm surprised to see it here on the roland ex30 the next feature is the tempo lock and this is a very useful feature for those who are practicing you want to practice from a low speed to a higher tempo and while you're switching between the different registration you don't want your tempo to be jumping around and this is such a crucial feature that i am surprised that yamaha still hasn't put it into the e series which is supposed to be a learner series a keyboard but it has been found in literally all other brands like cork and casio but just not found on Yamaha and this is a very welcome feature and the next feature related to styles has got to be the fade out button there is a fading out button which I really like this feature is not found in literally almost any entry-level keyboards you can find it on the higher end Yamaha PSRS series and the Tyros and the Genos and you don't get it on the lower end series and I really like the fade out because I don't have to manually turn the volume knob down as I'm trying to fade out. What I'm also surprised is the fade out is configurable. You can configure how many seconds it's going to take to fade out. And I'm just simply blown away that this kind of configurability is found in this entry level keyboard. The key to turning on the keyboard and quickly start playing is one touch setting and Roland has really included a good amount of one touch settings on this keyboard. So every style that is in here, each of the style has four different variations of one touch setting. I am absolutely surprised that this amount of one touch setting is found on an entry level keyboard like this because you are definitely not going to find it on the E series or even the Casio CTX which usually provides only one set of sounds and effects for each style one feature which takes up a massive portion of the keyboard panel is the scale tuning and you can tell that Roland has targeted this keyboard for the oriental market because the guys in Middle East very often don't use the equal temperament tuning which is used in the Western world. And from this feature, you can tell that it is clearly targeted towards this market, the Indian and the oriental market. However, Roland has taken this one step further and it's a step which I really, really like. Each of the 12 buttons on the scale tuning 
is also a trigger for MP3 samples. So there are 12 buttons that you can assign MP3s to and it will trigger phrase pads which is a feature that you don't find on entry-level keyboards at all. You can find it on the PSR S series, which costs much more than this keyboard, I'm sure. And even on the Casio CTX 5000, the flagship of Casio does not trigger MP3s with their phrase pads. These days, there are loads of high-quality samples that are found on the internet, and you can just load up these samples and quickly personalize your song to sound the way you want it. And the next feature that literally just threw me off is a microphone input. Wow, a microphone input for this level of keyboard. You know, people in developing countries, Indonesia, Vietnam, they like to sing along when they play. People in India, people in Middle East countries, they love to sing along while they are playing and a microphone input is just such an important feature. And not only is there a microphone input, but you can apply a microphone DSP effects to that microphone input. Although it doesn't allow granular control of all the microphone effects, you have to understand the price point of this keyboard. And this is really just a very welcome feature that I'm just absolutely blown away. Casio CTX 700 and Casio CTX 800 has to learn from this keyboard. In fact, Yamaha has to learn this feature from this keyboard. This keyboard has a massively full-blown, fully functional mixer. And this mixer built into this keyboard gives you granular control of all the volume settings of almost every single thing on this keyboard. You can adjust the volumes of every single layer. You can adjust the volume of not only the accompaniment as a whole, but it allows you to go into the individual tracks of the accompaniment and adjust the bass volume, the chord volume, it allows you to adjust the microphone volume as well as even the volume of the phrase pads that you're triggering. And I'm just blown away that you can find a feature so extensive as this on the Roland EX30. The next thing that is quite standard on this keyboard is the registration memory. We have eight banks of four buttons, giving you a total of 32 slots for your registration. This is quite normal. I you know, would have wished that the registrations could have been named or perhaps the registration could have been saved onto a thumb drive and thereby allowing unlimited number of uh, registration banks. But you know, perhaps the price is such that it is technologically not feasible. However, this is still a big step up from Yamaha's PSR E363, which has only nine slots for registration settings. And this keyboard takes a pedal input, and I am surprised that this pedal input is very assignable. You can either configure this pedal to trigger the sustain, or the soft piano function. In addition, you are also able to use it to trigger rhythm start and stop, as well as using it to move your registration along. You can actually use it to trigger the different registration, which is rare for a keyboard that is in this category. While I feel that Roland could have just taken one tiny step further, they could have made it such that the pedal can trigger the uh, fill-ins as well as go to your variation of your style but you know i'm not complaining that there is these functions already built in in there and i'm happy and i will be looking forward to using these functions on the roland ex30 one thing that disappointed me on this keyboard is that there is no auxiliary in and there is also no bluetooth connectivity function which means that i'm not able to stream backing tracks from my phone either via a 3.5 millimeter cable or bluetooth streaming i do that quite often with my students and we have songs on our phone that we would just stream to the keyboard and play along with but on the roland ex30 we just cannot do that we will most likely have to copy our mp3 into a thumb drive slot it in and then trigger the backing track from there however to make up for this at this price point, I'm just surprised that there is a pair of quarter inch left right stereo output. This is an absolute necessity for those who intend to bask or intend to gig with it. You just need a pair of stereo outputs. A lot of my students would just hook up their keyboards to their own external PA system or monitor speakers and really just this left right output is just a godsend at this price level. 
There is a USB to host and USB to device socket which allows you to transmit and receive MIDI which is pretty standard these days. In addition, you can actually load Roland styles from their library into this keyboard to expand the number of styles on this keyboard and that is quite a welcome move. Now let's talk about a recording feature. There is a sequencer on this keyboard but it only allows one pass recording. There are 10 slots where you can record your own user song, but it doesn't allow you to do multi-pass recording where you can record layer by layer. It is, uh, after all, a multi-track recorder. Yes, it will individually assign the tracks as you're recording it, but it doesn't allow multi-pass. I am not really complaining because if you were to connect the USB MIDI to a laptop and just use one of the freely available door out there you can do a lot more than an inbuilt sequencer so i myself don't miss that function too much and the thing that i always talk about is user friendliness how user friendly is the entire interface and the keyboard if someone who is used to another brand can they get around on this keyboard and i can tell you i am really comfortable with the layout and the physical buttons on this keyboard quite unlike the Casio PXS series where they decided to go really naked without all the different buttons. Roland has decided to make sure that almost every feature and function that is thinkable can be accessed using the onboard physical buttons and I like that. I like my keyboards to have tactile buttons that I can quickly access while I'm performing or playing. I don't like to dwell into menu after sub menu to get into something that I want to just instantly trigger. There is still a sub menu but that's only if you want to make more granular changes to a certain setting and that is something that you won't do on the fly anyway but for pretty much almost anything you can think of that you want to trigger on the fly you can do that with physical button. So my final thoughts are this I think Roland has got a winner on your hands. This is gonna be a very capable keyboard so whether or not it succeeds in this market depends on a couple of things. First thing is how they are going to market it. So Roland in my country, I'm not sure about any other country, but in my country, the marketing is just pathetic. You know, the authorized distributor just expects the Roland brand to sell by itself. And I have tried many times to contact Roland to say that, you know, I'm willing to review your products. Why don't you collaborate with me? Let's catch up. I sent email to Trevor of Sweely Music, which is the distributor of Roland. I've sent emails to Daniel. I've even personally visited their shops and basically I don't think they're interested to work with me at all. I haven't got any response from them. So the marketing of the keyboard is one thing. Next thing is the pricing. It has to be very keenly priced because we are talking about developing markets that doesn't have a very high per capita GDP to be able to afford high-end prices. And the third thing that will determine the success is the build quality. I hope that Roland has learned from the EX20 build quality issues. I just hated the build quality of the Roland EX20. I love the sounds. I love the internal bits. There were good stuff in there, but the build quality just totally disappointed me. I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on the up and coming Roland EX30. Till the next time, continue making great music.